The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman. My pleasure to be here this uh, Monday, Friday, Tuesday. What are we doing here? Monday. Yeah, Monday. Sorry. God, <laughs> it was a little confusing. All right, I'm back. Monday, the uh, October, the uh, something, September. Well, what a day this is. What do you mean Wednesday? Somebody say Wednesday there? Sprint Spaghetti Day. Oh, my engineers are messing with me. Okay. Well, it's good to be here on the 14th day. That's what it is. Now everything's coming back to me. Sorry. I had a rush to get back here on time, but I am back here. And let's see the Dow is down 43 at 16,389. The S&P is down 6 at 1954. The comp index is, if I can see it, the comp index is right now down about 13. Yep, down 14, uh, at 14. Oh, uh, 4809. You've got crude oil down 30 cents. You've got gold up three at 1106. Silver's down 11 cents. This is a very interesting session. Why? Because we're kind of waiting for the Fed at the same time. Not only are we waiting for the Fed, but we are, um, at least I'm anticipating that the Fed is kind of stuck here. On the one hand, they really would like to start doing something with interest rates just to show that they can do it. Not that it's needed, that's not the point. The point is only that it can be done. They don't want, to, they don't want um, us to think that they are um, <clears throat> perhaps belabored by uh, being, being committed on the one hand, but not able to on the other hand. So this is going to be a very interesting period. So as I'm looking at it right now, we've got um, two things going on. We've got the market pulling back in this H to lowercase h to a lowercase m pattern. And uh, at the same time, you've got, see the E-minis here at six, down 650? You've got the H pattern going to a lowercase m pattern. Look at the weekly chart. It did squeak to a little minor A. This is the uh, Z contract. This is the December contract. So we call it an A, um, gray A in the weekly chart. Not the point. The point really is, and I, I spent a ton of time this weekend, boy, did I send out charts. Must have been 11 charts, 12 charts, I don't know, for my subscribers to my opening call, showing that there's just a modicum of strength. But at the same time, I did a lot of work on the VIX index. And my conclusion is that just as I, I did this during the uh, May crash, remember, was it 2011 or 12, that one intraday crash, 1,000 points down, 1,000 points up, um, what was really important about that is as I went through charts over a period of time, I realized that that flash crash session created price points to the downside that could be met later, but that they were totally irrelevant for that particular time. And that we should take, in that particular instance, maybe two thirds of the price to the downside and consider that the price of all the instruments and stocks that got pummeled really should be quite a bit higher than that low. So let me explain what I'm talking about in plain English. Let's just go to the Dow, IND. You remember the Dow went to a lower low than the October low, but at the same time, what it did, let me just put this as an A and a B. At the same time, price is price. You're ready, you know, you're looking at the price. Uh, as someone said the other day, hey, don't tell me I'm not looking at what I'm looking at. Yeah. The price went down to 15,371 in the Dow on the 24th of August. If you look at the weekly chart, that's really the clue. The weekly chart broke the 15,855 low of October, then bounced above it. And my contention is that at least 50%, that first 500 points was legitimate, but then the program selling of the next 500 points, I'm eliminating. I'm eliminating in my mind I cannot eliminate it on the chart. It is there. This is the 120 minute chart right here. So when I'm looking at this, I say that that price point, the low point of 15,370, <clears throat> excuse me, that is legitimate. But the real low was probably 
above the 15,855 level. But to be uh, fair to, to, because the S&P didn't break its October low, to be fair to the Dow, let's just say it hit close to 15,855. That says to me that there's just enough energy to create a little H, uh, I'm sorry, a cup formation in the Dow chart, the, the weekly chart, which allows this lowercase daily H going to a lowercase daily M to continue a little longer. And if that's the case, then you don't want necessarily have to be in a great rush to get to um, the short side. And I don't think that you need to take all the opportunities. When I went through charts over the weekend, I saw so many stocks that were doing absolutely fabulously in the rebound. But then on closer examination, I looked and I thought, wait a minute. I'm looking at resistance points, one or two, just points above. So they might look great now, but that says they're about to bump into very strong resistance. So what we did in my opening call is we stayed in our short positions. We At least uh, I, I haven't been able to check. Now. I haven't even looked at the charts until I've just come in. So I believe that we're still in our short positions. One of them did get taken out. That's that's based on, on volatility. That, that we knew was a, a risky uh, a trade. But at the same time, um, it's one of those that we will be back because it's what we do. At the same time, folks know that, that that is a risky trade and therefore it has to be a very small position. It's more an insurance policy. But talking about insurance policies, what I, I mentioned to subscribers back in February or March, this is the year that I want you please to become at least cognizant, at least aware are the fact that you can insure your portfolio. You don't have to sit there like a, like a lame duck saying, oh my God, market's going down and I'm stuck with these positions. I don't really want to get out of them. I've been in them so long. It's just a complicated thing. Take insurance and we bought insurance policies. And that's what we're looking at. So where are we now? What we're looking at is the sideways pattern. Look at this 120 minute chart of the Dow. Look at this. Very unusual. But remember, I spoke about this for, for, for days. I've been saying, be careful. Rectangle formations can last a lot longer than your patients. And they can also fool you by going to the top of the range. In this case, Dow 16,600s, 16,660s to be even more precise. And then they can fail. They can turn around instead of breaking out like you're expecting. They turn around. What do they do? They come all the way back. And then you think they're going to break down and it just goes right back into the range. Be careful with your emotions. This is the point where I say to subscribers, we're going to be a bit light here. I'm not, there's just not, there's no rush to get into the shorts. There's no rush to get into any longs. Let it play out. Get your positions as precise as you can and put in your stops or buy stops and just let it be. Let it play out. Let it, let it filter through this yo-yo uh, oscillation, narrow oscillation. It feels really big because if you're in it, 35 points on the S&P is huge. But no, no, just don't be fooled. Keep thinking. The trend, the major bias, look at this weekly chart, look at this monthly chart, the major bias is towards going back towards the October lows if they weren't taken out, but definitely to the August 24th lows. So I hope I'm making myself just about as clear as I'm trying to be. I mean, he said, I think. Okay, well, let's just do this. The dollar is a factor here, and this is where the Fed might be doing something. So we've got a break coming up. Dollar's trying to rally. It isn't impacting gold all that much. Gold is, as I say, up about two or three dollars right now. But this is not a great looking chart for gold. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour on this 14th day of September. And a happy new year to our Jewish subscribers and patrons.
Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. EverBank bank is a member fdic and equal housing lender since 1984 basil chapman has been using the chapman wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion while originally hand drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. We're back. So my Dow Quartet, very influential uh, index that I've uh, produced here, GE, IBM, Triple M, and UTX, just a, just a quartet sometimes. We have guest artists. We don't have any now. GE, holding well. Not doing very much, but holding well. And if you take away that 19.37 low of the 24th, treat it as if uh, GE maybe went down to 22.30, a point higher. Um, then all this is a consolidation, making an H pattern in the weekly, making a rectangle pattern or an H to a lowercase m in the, in the daily. And the monthly saying, hey, it's just a matter of time before you go back under the 24 level of the 200 period moving average. 
that's okay action <clears throat> but it's good for the market because it's saying down 15 cents at 24.80 it's holding the nine period moving average just below that um so that's okay IBM IBM um well IBM is really looking terrible in the monthly chart terrible in the weekly chart and the daily chart hasn't even been able to uh, really break out. It's it's under the 146.20 level of the of the nine period moving average of 146.14. Um, I I just don't see very much for it here unless by the end of the week there's really some terrific news that that sends the market <clears throat> into the 17,000 uh, and 50 area or more. So you've got not MM but triple M triple M. <clears throat> Just a lousy looking chart. It was spectacular. And now it's just looking very weak. Daily, weekly, monthly, just not good at all. UTX, my, my uh, G is my near term bellwether stock for the Dow. UTX is my more intermediate term. Lousy looking chart. I mean, nothing hasn't even been able to go. It's gone to a B maybe five days ago in the daily. But it hasn't broken out into the 94s. It's at 9183. Should be easy for it from here to bounce uh, into the 94, then 96 uh, area for the nine period moving average. 124.45 was the high. Hey, this is just not good. Let's look at some gold stocks. So, so that's my Dow quartet is just not showing anything right now. Not breaking down, but certainly not giving a really good support. Um, let's go to ASA, one of my favorite gold stocks, just as an info, informative uh, instrument not very good it was it looked like it was going to do something all it's doing now is trying to hold within this rectangle formation between these major bars of 8.39 7.15 is the low back on the 28th the week of the 28th of august and it's just kind of stuck this is uh, asa gold and precious metals limited they used to be um uh, located or well, there was all south african company then they moved there i think they moved to bermuda so that's not so great i mean this is a stock that really gives me a great deal of information and it's not doing very much now and gld actually doesn't look it looks pretty much the same gld nothing going on now here's the issue when i look at the uh, nasdaq stocks you've got amazon hasn't been able to break into the 550s is at 520.98 right now the weekly chart is a, a very unusual pattern actually let me put it this way this is what i've seen this upside down but i've hardly ever seen it this way around in the weekly chart spikes up to 580.57 let me put that in 580.57 and then what does it do and this was way back in um, early July, I believe it was. Let me check about the 12th. Some, oh, yeah, 24th. So in 24th of July, and then it plops down to 450, 451 round number low. Let's put that in, 451 round number low. And all of a sudden, it has a rally, and that rally is good, but it just can't take out all the previous highs on the left side. And those previous highs on the left side are really here. That's uh, the week of the 21st of August at 5.39, the week of the 7th of August at 5.42, and then the final one is 5.44.95, the uh, consolidation after the big spike and pullback. So you have to wonder, you have to say to yourself, if the market was up today, then Amazon probably with the NASDAQ would be higher, and that would be C, and we could still make a D, but there's a lot of resistance in the five. 27 to 533 area for Amazon. And this has been a leader. Look at Netflix. Oh, don't type it into the chart. Type it into the little block there. And FLX. And Netflix is saying, yep, I will. The question is, uh, will I look at uh, Facebook? I won't because it's part of the panoply of stocks we want to look at right now. Netflix, just uh, they've done everything right up until now. And I think it's just market conditions that are saying, hey, I think people are just tapped out financially. And uh, Netflix is going to be one of those that has a little bit of a problem with that, even though it's a great bargain. I happen not to get Netflix. I will sometime soon. I just haven't go around to it. And um, this is really a G. Everything about us is this is a peak G in the weekly. And uh, you've got yourself a peak G, is same thing, G slash C in the monthly. So this is giving me a lot of information about very important stocks at this particular time that had done everything right and are now struggling a little. I'll be right back. 
And we'll be looking at uh, the NASDAQ IWM. We'll look at some things when I get back. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will Will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. Uh, We're back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians out. So, hey, a couple of questions about what about oil? So, Danny, this is what I'm looking at here for oil. I did some work over the weekend uh, looking at the commodities, and I thought, okay, it's just it's it's time for them to rally. Um, but you know, you can think it's time for them to rally. They don't know it's time for them to rally. So I said to myself, look at the charts, look real closely. What, what exactly do you go eat through each one? And I went through all of them. So this is what I'm looking at. Crude oil had a spectacular move from under 38 <clears throat> to almost 49. 
And it did it in, so the low was on the 24th of August, the market low, it was 37.75 and it turns around, it goes one, two inside bars and then whoop, a really beautiful candle. And then another one and another one, that's three in a row. Well, look what it did to the weekly chart. And I thought, hey, I've seen this pattern before. I'm going to get all excited about it. And then the more I study it, am I finding that this is what I call that single leg A phenomenon that fails? Don't get carried away. I was going to add some uh, oil stocks, all sorts of things. The more I looked at it, I said, hey, wait a minute. We, we've seen this picture before. On the January the 30th, week of the January the 30th, um, is that the 20th? No, the 30th. There was a beautiful turnaround candle, a wonderful follow-up candle. And then 60.54 was a high. It goes to 60.24. It goes to a peak A. And then I thought, oh, as it opened the week, it looked like it was going to go to a, a B two weeks later. And then what it did is it certainly did go to a B, and then it failed. And it went to a lower low. I thought, okay. Then it had a beautiful doji candle for a, a trough E in the weekly chart. That was, I think, May the last week of May. Let me just check. Second to last week of May. Yeah, the week of the 20th. And it spirals up and it goes peak A, pulls back. Beautiful inside bar. It, it closes above the close of the previous week. Nice. Second week, whoops, it goes right through. And it goes to a peak B, pulls back inside bar, all at the upper end, has a beautiful candle on the week. This is the week of the 1st of May and goes all the way to a peak C and it makes this uh, not an evening star kind of candle, but it really a doji with a long leg at the top. All right. Then it has almost the same thing, but a little miniature inside bar. This is the week of June of uh, May the 15th. And then all of a sudden it goes kaplop. Kaplop, kaplop, and it holds the nine period moving image. Well, I drew in the rectangle formation before then, so it wasn't a surprise to me that you got it. The only big surprise was that the MACD was climbing, and then suddenly the stochastic started to deteriorate. That deterioration caused crude oil, this is a continuous contract, the first week of July to open at 59.70, go to 60.55, nice kind of early action and then kaplop it goes down to 57.36 did i say that correctly uh did i say that correctly opens at 59.70 goes to 60.55 yep and goes down to 57.36 under the 9 ema and then the macd turns around the stochastic turns around and this is what it's been doing so I would have to say to you, Danny, I'm not sure if you're long, sure what position you have, but what I am looking at is that at crude oil, continuous contract at 43.94, what does this say? It says 43.94. Okay, we're in, we're in sync there. The continuous contract is trading the same as the Z contract, is it? Uh, CLV with the V contract. Okay, that's fine. So if at any point this week crude oil trades under 43, and then closes under 43. I don't mind it trading, but if it closes under 43, what it says is single leg A up phenomenon, failure pattern, breaking more than 50% from the top, from the bottom to the top. And if it closes under 43%, $43, then that weekly chart gets even weaker because the MACD will deflect lower in the stochastic. So this is really important. Crude oil has no choice if it get, if it's going to rally this week it needs to clear 4650 and close above 4650 actually if it closes above 46 that's okay but it has to clear and touch 4650 that's that's only three points less than three points away crude oil used to do that in a second lately it's really struggling so if you want to do something that's the inversion you know i love to look at mirror images well, look at the uh, SCO. Oh, no, what the SCO is the ProShares Ultra Short. Yep, the ProShares Ultra Short Bloomberg Crude. It's gone to a peak C. It looks like this month, if it doesn't break above uh, 137.18, SCO ProShares Ultra Short Bloomberg Crude. And in the and the daily, it's all it's done is it's got this H pattern that's at the bottom, and it says, I, I can make some kind of a case that 
so far, it's having more rising lows and rising highs, which says that the lowercase m, which is like the W formation that we often look at for the cup formation, it says that SCO at 94.02, if it takes out 96.50 at any point this week, you got a problem because crude oil is going to be going down even deeper. And there's this, ca this crazy single leg A up. This is a, a, a trough A maybe in the weekly chart. See that? So we're watching this real closely. Oh, I should have put this in. I, I wanted to do it at the time, and then I forgot. I wanted to put in an E slash B because that's if you're doing Chapman Wave methodology, you want to know what your alternate count is. That's your alternate count. This has actually gone a little deeper than I would expect. Therefore, there's a chance that it actually turns out to be an E in the weekly. And if crude oil starts to decline further, then this is going to start a brand new A, B, C, D to the upside. That could take weeks. Um, so I'm, I'm really watching crude oil very closely. Why? Because put it together with the um, put it together with the gold. Look, gold has got that single leg A up failure pattern in the weekly chart. Made a peak D in the daily right at 11170. 11.6980 actually to be exact on the 24th and inversion comes down so i absolutely am watching these what about platinum let me see pl i don't think i've notated it for a while yes there's that h pattern coming to retest the bottom let me look at high grade copper high grade copper <clears throat> see this is what I'm, I'm concerned about that that sudden isolated rally which seemed to have legs managed to go to a d in the High grade copper daily chart, continuous contract. The MACD is still quite good. Stochastic's up at 88%. So this pullback here is going to be really important. Why? Because if, if high grade copper at 2.409 starts to take out 2.37, closes under 2.37, you have a problem because this candle, this very strong candle of the eighth, says, be careful because if you take that out, all of a sudden you can make a reversal. You've got an H pattern. And then H pattern says key support levels will be tested. And what is the key support level? Obviously, it has to be this candle right here at, with a low of 2.307. And the one next to it, the one before on the week of the fourth, uh, no, on the 4th of September had 2.306. Uh, so 307, 306 is going to be really important. High grade copper, if it's going to show that it's got some leadership role here. That would be very important. And if it does, it needs to take out last week's high. So it's not a single leg A up. Well, at least it is a single leg A up, but it's managed to extend above 2.4755. So that's that. Now, the EURUSD, um, let me just see that. Yeah, this is in a trading range. Let me put it this way. The dollar is in a trading range. The EURUSD, the Euro uh, dollar uh, US dollar um, is in a trading range. The TLT in a trading range at this point. Look at that. And it had a very strong leg up, but it went to only a B and then it pulls back. Remember the A is what I was talking about. That's that A that went in there, right? That's the A that went in there. I'll keep it over here because this is now a V, the inverted V, and it failed to break to the upside. In fact, it's pulled down. This is saying to me, that bonds are just stuck in a range. And uh, because they're stuck in a range, uh, you've got to watch the parameters. And at 121.68, it takes it all the way to 128, 129. It breaks out to the upside, TLT bonds, and the rates come down. And on the downside, a break under 114.50 says, oh, oh, now we're going to have some higher rates. Got to be real careful. And that's really what the market might be afraid of right now. Question about the USDCAD, Canadian a dollar, US dollar, Canadian dollar. Yeah, it's holding very nicely. It's holding in a peak C, uh, call it F slash C, in the weekly chart. But so far, no, no, what am I talking about? That's a C and that's a D. Oh, it made a D. In the weekly, it made a D. And in the monthly, it's still in a C. I, I remember I spent a lot of time on this. I haven't looked at it for a while, but I did spend a lot of time on it saying, is that correct? Is that the notation? Yeah, that's a C and it looks like it's failed at C before. This C doesn't look like it wants to fail because the stochastic in the dollar, US dollar to the Canadian dollar currency pair acting beautifully. It's above the left side, right side price time match. 
by one month and by 1.30 and it's a 1.325 right now. Um, hey, good action. MACD is good. Stochastic's up at 92%. Relative strength is not confirming. It's not as high as it was when it made that peak A over there back in January, but it is holding well. Um, hey, I like this. Um, it's acting very nicely. So that's the one. That's that's a positive. I wonder what EWC, I haven't looked at it for ages and I haven't got it notated anymore, but I used to. The, yeah, EWC is the Canadian iShares. See, when it comes to stocks, it's still that H pattern. You've got to keep that in mind. Week, uh, week weekly and a lousy monthly for the uh, EWC, which is the iShares MSCI Canada ETF. So now let's do this. Um, I'm going to take this. I had a question about Baba. Baba. Yep, same thing. I, th these chart patterns are really awful. Baba is Alibaba. I'm not sure what the question is. Uh, let me see if there is a question here, an email. What is the story behind Alibaba? Massive accounting fraud. Say this is not so. Hey. <laughs> uh, well, Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. Is that the one? Anyway. No, oh, you're right. Those were the 40 Thieves. Accounting error. Accounting error. So what we've got is Barbe is at 61.70. It's down 2.93. Horrible chart pattern. It's the lowercase h and a tiny little h here. It says that if Alibaba takes out 60.25 on a closing basis, we'll watch out below because the 58 round number low on the 24th. Gosh, there were a lot of round numbers. 58 round number low. Okay, that's that would be the target. So yeah, not good at all. Is Yahoo? Yahoo is the one that's related to this, right? Yahoo. Well, don't put it there. Type it in there. Yahoo. Yeah, same thing. Oh, man, they look like twins. Um, oh, got a smack down by Barron's. I, I saw that. I saw the heading. I didn't look at Barron's, but I did see it. Something about uh, Baba has more sun to go or something like that. Okay, so now what I want to do is this. I looked at this the other day and I thought, man, I know a lot of people buying cars. Why, why is GM still stuck? Why is Ford still stuck? I just don't know. I, I, I don't know what it is because they are selling these cars. And I must say, I'm not hearing such great reports about salesmen, but salespeople. Um, maybe that's not the case, uh, always the case, but I did hear some stories that were quite horrendous. Um, look at Ford. Just stuck. Look at um, FCAU. Fiat Chrysler, and there are so many people buying Jeeps. You just see so many Jeeps on the road. Look, it's just not doing anything. So I'm going to go to Ernie in Dearborn, Michigan. How appropriate. Ernie, how, how are you? Are you? Uh, Mr. Ernie, yeah, I just wanted to give, uh, give a little quick thoughts on your part for the Sarepta Therapeutics, SRPT. You know, okay. I've been in that one for a while, and if you remember, I'm kind of an all-or-nothing guy. I don't Correct. sell parts. And uh, last time we had a conversation, I think we were, I don't know, lower 30s or something. Now we're, you know, testing, I think, hopefully the $40 area. So, uh, folks, we're looking at uh, SRPT trading at 36.84, Sarepta Therapeutics. And this is one that had has a long history. It, it had a different name once, and that went from like the sevens to tenths, three cents. I don't know what it was. It really came down. Yeah. And then either they had a name change or they did a 10 for I don't know what they did. Um, but most importantly, this is a stock. So let me do this. Uh, Very a. new susceptible, obviously. You know, it, it, this, this trades very much like you expect from biotechs. There's just one really big difference. And the difference is that all the consolidations and breakouts to the upside in the um, in the pattern that I like to call the let me just type that in in the U pattern. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and this is this is exactly what you see in uh, in uh, biotechs, especially in the very low price biotechs. And what happens is very often they use the stock as currency for different things. So there's okay. this regular 30 days or 45 days. So this is a regular thing, and you see the stock. Look, even this one has got um, look at look at this. It's got a high in 24th of January, uh, 24th of June, then a high on 21st of, of July, then it suddenly starts this rhythm. 
uh, mm -hmm. August the 8th. So it keeps on making circle, a uh, half, so it makes semicircles with higher highs. Sure. I like it. I'm going to talk about it in a moment. Can you hold on, Ernie? Of course. We'll be back with Ernie and you. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Larry. Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. Hi, folks. We're back. So I'm looking at the weekly chart, and I love to see, do stocks continuously make Ds? If they do that, there's a rhythm to it I can understand very easily, and it tells me about the, um, the patterns that we can look for and at the same time, what's really important is it says that if the majority of the time, this particular stock in this particular uh, time frame goes to the fourth highest peak and then even higher, but certainly to the fourth highest peak, 
That means that you cannot necessarily rely on it 100%, but you can weigh your thinking towards saying, okay, this is a, a pattern that repeats. So what we've got here in Sarepta uh, Therapeutics, um, and Ernie, you've been for a while. I'm going to do two things right now. One is, I'm just going to say to you, it's getting a little bit toppy um, on, the, on the shorter term. I've got a G slash, slash C. Everything about it says it's probably a G in the uh, weekly chart. But the way it keeps bouncing to the upside, the rhythm now has changed. It looks to me like the rhythm now is product-oriented and not news-oriented. This is my just my visual take okay. of what chart patterns with biotechs. With biotechs, you get a much longer period, a six-week period or more, between the cup formation and trying to go to the new high and then pulling back, and then cup okay. formation spike. This is different. I think there's a story here. So I love what I'm looking at here. I've got, a, I've got the feeling that on any pullback, what's going to be really important to you is how does 35 to 34 hold? It's a 3692. I'm going to recommend it at this particular point. The only thing I would, I would say, because it's a biotech, because it's closer to the most recent highs, if you want to take a little bit off just part of money management, I'd say that that's appropriate at this particular time. But the core position, I'd love you to hold it. And I tell you what, today is Monday. If we can look at it again, maybe Wednesday or maybe Thursday. Um, Thursday, they're going to they're, they're have a uh, conference in front of one of the major brokerage firms. Oh, See, well, they're, they're, eminently, they're going to they're, they're going to either going to win with the FDA or they're going to lose with the FDA. If you'll go back and look at longer term pictures, you'll notice big drops, big ups, you know, kind of thing. And, the, the, and again, the that's, ones, a, that's, a, that's a biotech. Well, the one time that it absolutely collapsed, that was in fact, I think, news related. It was a disappointment. Yeah. Sure. So, so that's why I'm saying that at this particular range, you've got nothing to lose by taking something off, other than upside potential if the news is good. But that's what you got your call for. And in yeah, biotechs, exactly. I think it behooves you to always have one, to be a little cautious and to be a little bit, uh, um, a little bit more proactive. Because what happens is okay. if you take profits, you turn around three weeks later and you say, "Wow." What a fortuitous thing. Um, and then sometimes it works the other way around. But when it comes to an FDA approval or not, yeah. you really you don't want to, you don't want this to drop twelve points or fifteen points. You don't know anybody at the you don't know you don't know anybody at the FDA that we could call the <laughs> You know, I, I did know Just someone who's in care. fact I knew someone who in fact was exactly in this area. He's no not kidding. there, he hasn't been there for a long time. And when I spoke to him, he was shocked at how many companies spent not hundreds of millions, but almost billions in in their FDA trials and everything, and sure. they don't get one or two sentences correct in the application oh, I form. Know. I know. And because of that, they did everything right, but what they stated they wanted to do as a goal is not what they achieved. They achieved everything else. He said he scratches his head. And then, of course, he became an advisor for that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, it's an amazing. I could not believe it when he said it. He said you wouldn't, and he named some companies. I said, I don't believe it. But oh, it was yeah, absolutely I do. true. Yeah. Yeah. So that's all I'm saying. A little bit of okay. caution beforehand. Take some profit. At least allow yourself the comfort of saying you were there. Thank you. Hey, Have thanks. a wonderful uh, day. Thank you very much, Ernie. Folks, stay tuned. You've got a program all the way through today. And my pleasure to be here. I'll be back tomorrow. And uh, check out my opening call. We've uh, got some nice positions there. Um, thanks for being here. Have a great day. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. 
Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.